third gift I would give to every child is I'd give power. You know, it might sound strange to give power to a child, but if you think about the attachment relationship, it's all about shared power. I'm the mother of a newborn. I really want to sleep. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, but my baby is crying. I give up what I want, and I give the power of my choice to that child. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I would really love to just sit down with a cup of tea and a brownie, and my child needs me. And my brownie is going to be stale, and my cup of tea is going to be cold because I share power with that child, and I let their need determine what I do with my energies and my time. We can share power in many ways. We can share choices. We can let a child choose between this color and this color of uh, color or crayon. We can even let them choose this color or this color bedspread, or even if we're gonna do a project in their room, the color of their room. Now, maybe you don't wanna say, what color do you want? But maybe you choose three colors and say, which color do you like? And so give them appropriate levels of power. Don't ever give them more power than they can manage. But my experience with children is they can actually manage a lot if you're mentoring them. So share power in that way. Another way that we share power is by giving compromises. I might say it's time to go to bed. And if I empower my child to know that they have choices for compromise, they might say to me, could I stay up five more minutes and finish my show? And now I want you to know it's really important to say yes when you can. So if I share power and I say yes when it's appropriate and when it's possible, that child will be able to accept my no's when I have to say them with more trust. So shared power is about forming relationships. It is fundamental to early parenting. And it is fundamental to our child learning to trust us and know what, where we'll be there with them and that they will be safe that we're in it for the long haul. Work to see your child's present moment through the eyes of their history. For example, children who come to you from hard places may need for you to give them power about food. Once a child has been deprived of food, long beyond, long, long years later, they're still afraid they won't have enough food. I remember a time I was working with a little girl and she was five years of age, quite disordered. And I was working with the family. The little one came in while I was standing in the kitchen talking to her mother, smelled a lovely supper going through the house, this beautiful aroma sifting through the house. And she wanted something to eat right away and food wasn't ready for 10 minutes. So she said, can I have a candy bar? And the mama said, no baby, we're gonna eat dinner in 10 minutes. I'm gonna have your favorite supper tonight. This little girl fell apart screaming and kicking and throwing things and, and speaking in, in, in unkind and, and mean tones to her mother. Going to her room and I heard things thrown against the wall and the mom said, I hope she doesn't break her mirror again. And the mom said to me, she said, do you think that little girl overreacted a little bit? And I said, no, I really don't. She smelled food. You told her she couldn't eat. You know she's safe. She'll eat in five or ten minutes. But she knows she doesn't have food. She thought she might die. And her reaction was about thinking she might die. I said, give her power with food. So think about that situation. She comes in and she says, can I have a candy bar? And you take that candy bar and you put it in her little hand and you fold her little fingers around it and you hold your hand. You said, of course you're going to have this candy bar and you can eat it right after supper. Do you want to save it by your plate or do you want to put it in your pocket till after supper? Now she knows she has power. Now she knows she won't die. That same little girl, one month after I was in her home, disclosed something she had never told the family. This little girl came from an inter international orphanage. She remembered being hungry, but in the years in the home had never told the family. And she said, Mama, do you know what this means? And her mother said, no, baby, tell me. She said it means, and as though she stepped into the memory, she looked up and began to look back and forth. And as though she were seeing an orphanage woman walk by, she said, Mama, it means, orphanage lady, will you please stop and give me food? But mother, they just keep walking by. This little girl had memory of terrible hunger. This little girl had memory of begging 
adults who cared for her to give her food. And no one met that need. We have to give power to the children to tell us their needs and to know that we will meet them. A way to empower a child who has felt hungry is to celebrate food. Let them help you plan the dinners. Let them help you make a menu. Let them bring special things from their room as a centerpiece. Let them have a bowl of fruit in their room. Take them to the grocery store when you go and let them buy wrapped snacked snacks. Not snacks that will uh, bring the bugs into your house, but raisins, nuts in little packages, fresh fruit. Let them have a bowl of fruit in their room. Let them have power bars. Let them always know there'll be plenty of food in your house. What I say to the children in the camp when we find that they're stealing food or hoarding food, which is very common in children who come from hard places. And I will say, I want you to know that you will never be hungry in this place. It is my promise to you. We will always have all that you can eat. I want to empower that child with practical tools, with practical knowledge, not that I know they won't be hungry, but that they have tangible evidence that hunger is, a, is an issue of the past.